Hi, I am Zain Khan and in this video we are going to do an example of forward kinematics using the homogeneous transforms. So I have a very simple robot drawn here. The robot has two rings of two units and three units respectively and at the end there is a gripper which is also called the end effector. The robot has motors at each of the joints here, here and here. So as a result of these motors, the joints are able to rotate and the rings are able to be moved with, with respect to one another. And in this particular configuration shown, we can see that the first ring with respect to the fixed frame right here is 100 degrees. Then the second ring is at an angle of 30 degrees and the end effector is at an angle of 80 degrees. And we have to do the forward kinematics. What this means is that forward kinematics is simply you are given the robot parameters, right? In this case, the robot parameters are the joint angles. And given the robot parameters, you have to find out the location and orientation of this end effector. So you have to find out the position and the orientation of the end effector. This is all there is to it. So the way we proceed with this is we first draw a moving frame at each of the joints of the robot. Let me draw out the moving frames and we have to make sure that while drawing the moving frames, the X axis of each of the moving frame lines up with the next link. So if I draw a moving frame here, the X axis must line up with this thing. So this is my first moving frame. This is the Y axis of this moving frame and just to mark out the X axis. This is my first moving frame M1. Now in order to draw the moving frame here, I make the X axis along with this link right here. So this is my X axis and my Y axis is going to be somewhere here. And drawing out the third moving frame right here, the X axis is going to be here and the Y axis is going to be here. So this right here is my M second moving frame. This is my third moving frame. So what I need to do is in order to do the forward kinematics, I need to first take the fixed frame, move it to the M1 frame and then M1 frame to the M2 frame and then move the M2 frame to the M3 frame. So this is the process or the procedure that I'm going to follow. And for moving the fixed frame to the M1 frame, I am going to use the first homogeneous transform. I call it H1 for moving from M1 to M2. I am going to use another homogeneous transform call it H2 and then use another transform, which is H3. So the final homogeneous transform that I want to get is this, which is just a multiplication of H1, H2 and H3. And this homogeneous transform right here, this one is going to be the transform that takes the fixed frame and moves it directly to the M3 frame. So it takes this and moves it directly to this. So this is the homogeneous transform that I'm going to get from this equation right here. So let me proceed with the working. So the I write H homogeneous transform is equal to H1, H2, H3, where the H1 homogeneous transform is going to have a rotation matrix and a displacement term. So let us write the rotation matrix first as A. There is going to be two zeros at the bottom. I can write instead of two zeros, I can write a vector of zero and transpose it. It's the same thing. Then a displacement term, then a one. Okay. So now I have to figure out what the displacement term is and what the rotation angle is. If I see the fixed frame and the moving frame M1, I can see that the fixed, the X axis of the fixed frame is right here. And the X axis of the moving frame is here. So the angle between the two is a hundred degrees. So the rotation matrix is going to be one with a hundred degree angle. 
now the displacement term we can see that the origin of the fixed frame and the moving frame m1 they are coincident so there is no displacement involved so the displacement in x and y are going to be 0 and 0 now moving to the h2 matrix I know that the bottom row is going to be just two zeros and a one. Now there is going to be a rotation matrix right here and there's going to be a displacement vector. So let us first be with the displacement vector. If I go from M1 to the origin of M2, the displacement is going to be just two units in X and zero units in Y. So it is going to be two and zero. You should remember that when going from M1 to M2, you are taking the coordinates in the M1 frame. So the coordinates are being taken in the M1 frame. So in the M1 frame, if you go from here to here, so if you go from this point right here to here, you see that it is just a simple translation in the X axis by two units and no translation in the Y axis. And now once you have your frame right here, so once you have your M one frame here the x-axis of the m1 frame becomes here now you need to see how much do you need to rotate it you need to remember that the rotation is always taken in the anti-clockwise direction as positive so i need to go from here to here i know that this angle is 30 degrees so this must be 330 degrees so the rotation angle here is 330 degrees and now for the H3 frame or the H3 homogeneous transform, I know that the bottom is going to be just two zeros and a one. Now there is going to be a rotation matrix here and there's going to be a displacement term. So now if I am at the M2 frame, I need to move to the M3 frame. I know that the displacement is just going to be three units in X, zero in Y. And the rotation. So in order to figure out the rotation, the x-axis of the M2 frame is going to end up here. So if I need to go from here in the anti-clockwise direction to here, if this is 80, I know that this is going to be 360 minus 80, which is 280 degrees. So I get 280 degrees. Instead of 280 degrees, I can also write minus 80 degrees and it is going to give me the same thing but I just want to keep it consistent. So 280 degrees. If I want, I can write it out in a more expanded form. So I can write it as cosine of 100 degrees, sine of 100 degrees, zero minus sine of 100 degrees, cosine of 100 degrees, zero and zero, zero, one. So this is my H1, which is a three cross three matrix then writing out the H2, which is cosine of 330, sine of 330, zero, minus sine of 330, cosine of 330, zero and two, zero, one. And similarly, the H3 is going to be cosine of 280, sine of 280, zero, minus sine of 280, cosine of 280, 0, 3, 0, 1. Now, if I expand this out further, so I get this homogeneous transform finally. And this homogeneous transform is the one that takes the fixed frame and takes it to the end effector frame or M3. This homogeneous transform moves the fixed frame to the M3 frame. So, in short, it takes this frame and moves it directly to this frame. And this is my final homogeneous transform. Now, if I try and dissect the terms here, I can see that this is nothing more than simply the addition of the 100 degrees, the 330 degrees and the 280 degrees. And it does make sense since it is just going to be an addition of all of these since it is just the rotate all the rotation matrices are being multiplied out and this term right here is the displacement term so what you notice right here is that once i have multiplied the h1 the h2 and h3 i end up with another homogeneous transform 
So if I no matter how many homogeneous transforms are multiplied, I am always going to end up with another homogeneous transform, which is this one right here. It is going to have the same properties of homogeneous transform. So it is going to be a three by three matrix as right here. Uh, the first the sub matrix right here. So the sub matrix right here is going to be the rotation matrix and this one is going to be the displacement term and from this displacement term I can see that 0.68 and 4.79 so 0.68 is the x coordinate of of the m3 frames origin and this is the y coordinate of the m 3s frame origin so 0.68 is basically this point right here in the x axis so it is this so I'm basically what I'm doing is I'm expressing this point in the fixed frame so I'm going this many units up and this many units to the right of course I haven't drawn this to scale so it might not turn out to be exact but you get an idea so the takeaway is that if you multiply a number of homogeneous transforms together you are always going to get a matrix which is going to be a homogeneous transform itself and it is just going to take the initial frame and put it directly to the end frame in one go so this h is what we wanted and we have got it and i can of course make use of this equation right here and use this x input this into this and so what this equation would mean with this h here is that if i have a point a small x which is expressed in the end effector frame i can Take that small x multiply it with this homogeneous transform and get the same point expressed in the fixed frame. That brings us to the end of this video. If you found this video useful, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe. And in the next video, we are going to do an even more interesting case of forward kinematics using homogeneous transforms. See you in the next video.